What's happening? I'm Abby Martin, and this is Breaking the Set. Tonight, we have a very special show for you. I'm featuring an exclusive debate between two very prominent Jewish voices with very different perspectives on the Israel-Palestine conflict. So without further ado, let's break the set. It was a terrible mistake, and we're working very hard to make it up for it. Once again, we put something on the air. It's a flat-out lie. Have you ever had sex with Governor Rick Perry? No, wait. Do not answer that. I want you to watch what we're about to do, because you've never seen anything like this on television. What we need is to question more, and to keep it uncensored, real and raw. My simple mission is to change the globe. I'm going to do it with this passion and fire with tone. He's one of the hard hitting. It's been over three weeks since the start of Operation Protective Edge, the latest military offensive launched by Israel against the Gaza Strip. To date, the bombing campaign and subsequent invasion has resulted in the deaths of 1,432 Palestinians, the vast majority of which are civilians including 327 children and 166 women, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. On the Israeli side, as many as 56 IDF soldiers and three civilians have also been killed, according to Reuters. The situation on the ground is changing by the minute, and these numbers reflect only the latest at the time of this broadcast. As the casualties continue to mount and a series of proposed ceasefires have failed, there seems to be no end in sight to the bloodshed. In fact, just today, the Israeli government called up 16,000 IDF reserve soldiers to bolster the ongoing military operation, which would bring the ground offensive to 86,000 troops. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is calling the operation thus far just the first phase of a much larger campaign and vows to continue to destroy Hamas tunnels with or without a ceasefire. In fact, just yesterday, during a humanitarian ceasefire, the IDF shelled a crowded market, killing 17 people, including one journalist. Aside from the deadly market bombing, Israel has also carried out a number of strikes on residential areas, medical centers, schools, and a UN building housing dozens of refugees seeking shelter. White House spokesperson Josh Ernst called the attack on the UN shelter, quote, totally unacceptable and totally indefensible. But not everyone in the administration shares that sentiment. See, despite a call by the international community for an investigation into Gaza war crimes at the UN Human Rights Council, America was the only nation to vote against the resolution. I've also just learned that all parties have just agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire. Now, given the amount of coverage I've given to pro-Palestinian voices on this show, I think it's important to also present the Zionist perspective. And that's why today I'm featuring a debate between Morton Klein, president of the Zionist Organization of America, and Max Blumenthal, journalist and author of Goliath, Life and Loathing in Greater Israel. Now, given the time difference between here and Jerusalem, this interview had to be pre-taped. So to maintain the integrity of the debate, we've made absolutely no edits aside from cutting out delays we experienced from the studio there. Check it out. Let's start by giving each of you a minute to provide an opening statement on what you think is the primary cause of the current conflict between Israel and Palestine. Max, let's start with you. The, there is no conflict between Israel and Palestine. Israel-Palestine is a single unitary state, and it is a conquest being carried out by the Jewish state in order to dispossess and ghettoize as many Palestinians as possible. It's been going on for 70 years. The population of the Gaza Strip are 80 percent refugees living in the second most overcrowded area on earth. They are the victims of this ongoing campaign of dispossession, and that's the root of their resistance. When they turn to violence, it is because of, the, of that 70-year legacy of dispossession. We need to see that and the siege, the ongoing siege, the eight-year-long siege of the Gaza Strip, which has de-developed this area deliberately as part of 70 years of dispossession, ghettoization, and expulsion um, in order to consolidate the ethnic purity of the Jewish state. Um, Morton? Well, of course, this is utter nonsense. Uh, this is simply due to the Palestinian Arabs and the Arab world's refusal to allow and accept 
Jews living in their midst. 22% of Israel are Muslims and Christians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Arabs were offered a state in 1937 on 95% of the rest of Palestine. In 1948, on essentially half. In 2000, uh, and in 2008, they rejected statehood every single time because the goal of, of the of the Arabs, unfortunately, is Israel's destruction. It is not a Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. In fact, the charter of Hamas calls for the murder of every Jew. It is a Nazi-like uh, document. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah charter, uh, the Palestinian Authority Fatah charter, in 10 clauses calls for Israel's destruction. This is the cause of, the, uh, uh, of this ongoing uh, war, Arab war against Israel, is their refusal to accept a Palestinian Arab state. The cause of this latest battle is 3,000 missiles aimed into the, in, into the population centers of Israel, attempting to murder as many Jews as possible. If there were no Hamas missiles, there'd be no Israeli retaliation that's simply des designed to protect the citizens of Israel. Uh, Max, let's talk about that Hamas charter, which features that introductory quote by Amman Hassan al-Banna, Israel will rise and will remain erect until Islam eliminates it and as it had eliminated its predecessors, how can Israel negotiate with an organization that doesn't recognize its right to exist? Well, that charter has been in publication for decades. Hamas has uh, <laughs> repeatedly offered to negotiate and has negotiated. They negotiated the Gilad Shalit prisoner swap. I'm not a spokesman for Hamas, and I'm not going to defend their political goals. What we're talking about here is a ghettoized population that's being completely decimated before our eyes, entire families being wiped out. And if you want to talk about charters, look at the Likud charter, which I presume Morton supports, which calls for the entire is Jewish state control over all of the West Bank. It doesn't even recognize the existence of Palestinians. This charter has been carried out. It's being carried out before our eyes, unlike the Hamas charter. Morton mentioned rockets from Hamas. They have killed uh, less than 13 people in the last decade. How many Palestinians ghettoized in the Gaza Strip have been slaughtered in this campaign of ghetto cleansing by the, the Israeli Air Force? How many? We're talking about over 1,300 in just the course of less than two weeks, and I doubt that Morton will condemn this or even put a limit on the amount of civilian casualties that he will be able to tolerate. We've seen this from no Jewish establishment leaders in the U.S., no moral limits, no uh, rejection or condemnation of this slaughter we're witnessing before our eyes. My friend, Rifat Alarir, who is the uh, editor of Gaza Writes Back, this fantastic anthology of Gaza writers, who is a professor of literature in the Gaza Strip, who teaches Hebrew literature in the Gaza Strip, has had his brother and his brother-in-law, his best friend, killed for no reason. These were not people connected with Hamas militancy. These are just people trying to be at home. And I want to hear a rejection from Morton of this slaughter of a civilian population in a fashion that Jews endured under, in the, under their own occupation. And Morton, he brings up a, a point. I just want to interject really quickly. Let's talk about that, that right to self-defense. We've seen that the Iron Dome has been successful at intercepting the majority of potentially deadly rockets. Do you feel and do you support this, this full-blown ground invasion and airstrikes on Gaza? <laughs> Of course, we condemn and are saddened by the death of any civilians, be they Arab or Jewish. <laughs> but there would be no civilians being killed in Gaza if Hamas would stop firing thousands of missiles against the civilian population in Israel. No Hamas missiles, no Israeli retaliation. And Hamas has told civilians to stay in their homes when Israel warns them to get out of their homes, out of, them, out of schools and mosques where there are missiles stored. And Hamas tells them, stay there. If you're there, Israel will not attack. So Israel uh, uh, simply hits military installations where there are missiles and rocket launchers. Do you know that uh, uh, Gaza Arabs are paid a rent for rocket launchers that they rent out their living rooms to Hamas so rocket launchers can be in hundreds of homes of the Gaza Arabs? Uh, there's a, they have living rooms, they have uh, dining rooms, they have kitchens, mm -hmm. they have missile rooms where rocket launchers are there. So the, the Gaza civilians get paid rent for it. Israel has <laughs> offered ceasefires. Stop laughing. Israel has offered many ceasefires. Ga uh, Hamas has violated every one of them. <laughs> well, this is the map. This is the this is the a picture of the of the emblem of the Palestinian Authority, a shape of all of Israel with an Arab kafia showing all of Israel as Palestine. Our, uh, Yasser Arafat, the arch-terrorist, 
honored with a, uh, in the middle of this emblem and a Kalishnikov rifle promoting terrorism. M Martin, this is who the Palestinian Authority is. M Martin, I just want to interject because really all I have seen is kind of these infographics and cartoons kind of backing up your mm -hmm. point there. And I wanted to see mm -hmm. Max's response um, to what you just said. Well, this is the hysterical mishigas that we're hearing from the apartheid lobbyists in Washington from their air-conditioned offices who have no contact with the Palestinian civilian population that's being decimated before our eyes. Families in the Gaza Strip are having to choose which room they sit in to decide which part of the family will be destroyed in the event of an airstrike. We've seen the neighborhood of Shujaya wiped off the map, the area of Khan Yunus wiped off the map, the entire areas, 40% of the Gaza Strip has had to have flee to UN shelters. 200,000 Palestinians are in UN shelters right now, and scabies is spreading through the population because the, the humanitarian crisis has gotten so extreme in the Gaza Strip. The Israeli uh, the, this, the most moral army in the world has deliberately targeted Gaza's only electricity plants and the ghetto cleansers from the outside have refused to restore uh, electricity to the Gaza Strip. This is the dire this situation. We're witnessing a one-sided slaughter and all we're hearing <laughs> is hysterical, discredited propaganda from another apartheid lobbyist in an air-conditioned office in our ancestral homeland of New York. Yeah, this is absolute rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Uh, if there were no Hamas missiles, there'd be no Israeli retaliation. Uh, the power plant that was hit, the hospital that was hit, were, were uh, uh, Hamas missiles that, that did not reach their targets and unfortunately hit hospitals and power plants. There's this no is evidence. Hamas's own missiles. The United Nations, don't interrupt me, I didn't interrupt you. The, the UN, United Nations themselves have acknowledged that this is Hamas missiles and Islamic Jihad missiles. If they stopped the missiles, there'd be no more retaliation. Uh, the sermons by the Hamas appointed Hamas appointed uh, 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 imams, religious leaders, call that Muslims will exterminate all the Jews. Uh, Mohammed Deef, one of the chief of staffs of, of, uh, of the uh, uh, Hamas, has said that uh, killing Jews uh, is, a, to, uh, is worship that draws us closer to Allah. This is a Nazi-like uh, uh, terrorist regime, Hamas. Israel left Gaza completely. They threw out 9,000 Jews, all of their soldiers, and what did Hamas do? They created a terrorist state, voted on by the Gaza Arabs themselves. They voted for the Hamas. They destroyed all the greenhouses that Israel left so they could have a real business, a real industry. They destroyed them all. Uh, and so uh, uh, even though this was all given to, the, uh, to Hamas, to the Arabs, the Arabs' uh, goal is Israel's destruction. No Hamas missiles. There'd be no Israeli retaliation. I wish that Mr. Blumenthal would start telling the truth and stop lying and lying and lying, Martin. defending a Nazi-like Nazi -like organization that calls for the murder of every Jew. That includes Max Blumenthal and his family. Coming up, I'll feature the second half of the debate between Max Blumenthal and Morton Klein. Stay tuned. I'm the resident, and I know words are powerful. Words like sheep, as in people who buy the crap our media sells us are acting like a bunch of sheep. Or words like greedy, as in our entire financial system is rigged by a bunch of greedy jerks. Or words like consumers, as in there's more to life than just being gluttonous consumers. I'm the resident, and I'm fighting idiocy one carefully chosen word at a time. Welcome back to the show, and now more of the debate between Max Blumenthal, author of Goliath, Life and Loathing in Greater Israel, and Morton Klein, the president of the Zionist Organization of America. I've heard a lot of, a lot of heated rhetoric also coming from the Israeli establishment, too. Um, and, and considering that Gaza is completely closed off, that people have nowhere to go, um, don't you think that the way that this campaign is being waged amounts to collective punishment of innocent civilians? <laughs> As I said, these civilians voted in this terrorist, Nazi-like terrorist group. They, get, they rent out their living rooms for rocket launchers. Israel warns them to leave their homes uh, be, and where, where the rocket launchers are, leave the hospitals, leave the mosques where rocket launchers and missiles are. They're warned ahead of time. Uh, Egypt, uh, they have an entire border aligned with Egypt. 
Egypt does not let anything to go in because they know Hamas is a terrorist regime that threatens Egypt themselves. Israel has let virtually everything go in except for uh, missiles and armamentarium, but it goes in through, they, they receive it through the sea and through their tunnels. They've used the concrete not to build homes and mosques and hospitals. They've used the concrete that Israel has allowed into Gaza <laughs> by building uh, hundreds of tunnels from Gaza into Israel, uh, designed to have terrorists come into Israel itself and murder and massacre thousands of Jews. Uh, the Hamas people who have been captured have acknowledged that in Rosh Hashanah they planned a massacre of, of uh, kibbutzim in Israel, uh, hoping to, to murder hundreds, even thousands of, of Israeli Jews, simply to kill Jews. And Mr. Blumenthal defends Hamas, defends the sermons calling for the extermination of Jews, defends their charter that calls for the murder of every Jew, and Mr. Blumenthal should be ashamed of himself. I, he's just... I don't think he's, that he's, he's defending really the charter, but let's, let's, let's move over to, to <laughs> Max, because you're saying that... Nothing's allowed. I'm saying. You're, I'm sorry. You're saying that everything's allowed and except things that can be, make missiles. Max, we know that that isn't true. Let's expand on that. that that's right. They allow Let's food, Max. medicines, and all sorts well, of chocolate, materials. pasta, I mean, I appreciate and aesthetics. M Morton, Morton, Morton. Uh, I'm talking. Morton, Morton. Max is talking now. Remember, I didn't interrupt you, so don't interrupt me. I, uh, I wanted to say, though, Morton, that I appreciate your statement of support for the brutal coup, illegal coup regime of Egypt, which came into power under a military coup. We see the shared values between the Zionist Organization of America and the brutal dictator of Egypt. Uh, the Wafa Hospital was the only geriatric hospital in the Gaza Strip, and it was shelled and destroyed by Israeli forces, deliberately targeted. We saw people on on life support systems carried out by nurses under fire. We saw elderly people on life support systems carried out. People who could have been your mother, Morton, if you had any humanity in you. And I know that if there were Jews in there, you would demonstrate some humanity for them, but you're not because they're Palestinians. They're people you have denigrated as Nazis. You've denigrated an entire population as Nazis. My sympathy is with the people who are enduring this one-sided slaughter. The background for this slaughter, as you've pointed out, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the Gaza withdrawal. The Gaza withdrawal enabled the siege of the Gaza Strip, in which Israel banned everything from cardamom to cinnamon to size A2 paper. Size A2 paper was banned into the Gaza Strip. What were they going to do? Make terrorist paper airplanes? Give me a break. The Israeli administrators, according to documents subpoenaed from the Ministry of Defense by the Israeli human rights group Gisha, count the calories each resident of the Gaza Strip is able to receive. That is abominable, and that is the siege Israel never left. And it's really important to point out that even though Morton and the Zionist Organization of America really represent the khaki shirt wing of the Israel lobby, his rhetoric sounds very much like the rhetoric that we've heard from presidential contenders like Hillary Clinton, from Bill Clinton, and even from members of the Obama administration who are blaming Hamas and blaming the residents of the Gaza Strip for their own killings. This extremism, this inhumanity, this sadism is deeply embedded in our political establishment. And Morton Klein, as far right as he is, is not that far from the center of this establishment right now. This is what the people of the Gaza Strip are dealing with. They're dealing with a siege from the brutal coup regime of Egypt, a siege from the brutal, the brutal Ethno, eth, ethnocratic regime of Israel, which seeks to there. keep them ghettoized permanently to consolidate its ethnic purity. And the United States has just rearmed Israel, tapping into its $1 billion supply of weapons that it keeps inside Israel to, to allow this slaughter to perpetuate and continue as Barack Obama claims that he's heartbroken. Uh, Morton, I wanted to jump in here really quickly before you respond, um, because there has actually been some blatant war crimes in terms of shelling of the UN refugee camp, the, the market during the humanitarian ceasefire. Last week, the U.S. was the only country in the UN Human Rights Council to vote against a war crimes inquiry into Israel's military campaign in Gaza. Why would the U.S. not want an investigation, and how do you explain the massive disparity that the U.S. has donated about $115 billion in foreign aid to Israel compared to $4 billion for Palestine since World War II. Uh, uh, 
America recognizes that it's complete rubbish, uh, that Israel's committed war crimes. Israel would not be retaliating if Hamas missiles weren't flying into civilian areas. Uh, Mr. Blumenthal, all you do is lie and lie and lie and call names. It's really shameful. This is hardly a debate when one side is simply lying about everything. Even America recognizes that Hamas has violated what their is he own lying ceasefires about? What that is they announced. What is he lying about? Say specifics. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying about... Uh, <laughs> about Israel targeting civilians, targeting hospitals. Uh, they hit, they simply hit uh, structures that have rocket launchers and Mosques, missiles and schools. And they have, and they have the, and they have the over 1,300 dead. Uh, basement. I didn't interrupt Mostly you. Could children. you be stop being so rude? Stop being so rude. The Hamas uh, 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 administration has their offices in the basements of hospitals, mosques, and schools. The United Nations has condemned them for this. Uh, uh, so th this is uh, well known. Uh, Canada and Australia has condemned uh, Hamas for this. Why don't they accept the ceasefire that Israel has actually uh, uh, accepted? Why do they intimidate journalists who have told me themselves they're afraid to write, sp uh, write the truth about what Hamas is doing, this Nazi-like uh, organization? Uh, and why did the Palestinian Arabs of Gaza vote in a Nazi-like Hamas terrorist group if there's so much in favor uh, of peace? And Hamas has never wanted to negotiate with Israel. Mm -hmm. And Hamas, of course, is on the terrorist list of both the European Union and the United States of America, understanding that their uh, goal is Israel's destruction and the murder of every uh, single uh, uh, Jew. Uh, so he's just lying about the, targeting these civilians and targeting hospitals. It's only when they tell people to leave certain areas because of missile launchers, because of the administration, Hamas administration people having their offices there. No Hamas missiles, no Israeli retaliation. And Mr. Blumenthal knows that full well. Uh, but somehow he gets pleasure out of siding with the enemies of the Jews. Maybe it makes him s uh, feel safe. Uh, this isn't a principle. This is a frightened person, Max Blumenthal, siding with the enemies of the Jewish people because it makes him feel more secure and safe, feeling if I side with the enemies of the Jews, maybe they'll leave me, Max Blumenthal, alone. Well, well let's talk about the facts here, Max. Uh, what is Israel supposed to do to stop the rockets? And, and I haven't seen any reports other than those rockets in the abandoned UN school. Um, but I want to get your perspective on this. Well, according to Morton's logic, uh, children, innocent children of the Gaza Strip are storing themselves in Hamas missiles or Hamas rockets mm -hmm. because the casualties that are piling up, and we've seen over 1,300 killed in this one-sided slaughter, this massacre, uh, are at least 30 percent children. A large percentage are women. Only a small proportion are Hamas fighters who are actively engaged in combat. And Israel has even had to fudge the numbers and named militants as anyone who's connected to a family that's loosely affiliated with Hamas. Uh, Morton, you know, uses this ki these kind of um, ethnic slurs against me and this tired rhetoric, claiming that I'm siding with the enemy of the Jews. Well, I think it's very dangerous to Jews and world Judaism to uh, to ignore the prophetic voice of Judaism, which transcends this slaughter, which transcends Tel Aviv, which is the bedrock of Judaism, and replace it with a Judaism of the gun, with a Judaism with no moral limits, with a Judaism of pure force. And that's what Morton is embodying right here. And I think that that kind of bellicose, rearmed, false uh, Zionist version of Judaism is an enemy of Jews everywhere. That's why we're seeing this moral freefall across the world and in the U.S. with established yeah, Jewish leaders refusing to condemn this Guernica-style <laughs> slaughter, this, this pogrom, mm -hmm. this, 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 this abominable scene that's ashamed the world, and we're seeing so many young Jews rise to the fore, why? Jews why? getting arrested in New York in acts of civil disobedience in front of the Israeli consulate, Jews uh, siding with Jewish Voice for Peace to push for a lies, boycott lies, of lies. this apartheid regime. Uh, We're seeing Jews what? rise up against this kind of <laughs> this kind of Judaism of the gun that Morton preaches. Uh, Morton, let's let's wrap you know, it up here and the, let's talk about a proposed ceasefire after cites... ceasefire. Really quickly, we have about five minutes left, and I want to get both your last points in here. Um, <laughs> if a proposed ceasefire after ceasefire continues to fail, what is the solution to stop the bloodshed? It Martin? fails because because Hamas violates it every single time. <laughs> they don't want to cease fire. They want to have as many civilians as possible uh, killed uh, by Israel to use it as a weapon against Israel. And these numbers are so inflated that Mr. Blumenthal uses. It is the Hamas Health Ministry 
The Hamas Health Ministry, do we trust them? That these tells us about these numbers. numbers. The facts are, the facts are that 80 percent of the people who are killed are men between 20 and 35. 700 of them are Hamas terrorists. Uh, so the numbers are given by Hamas Health Ministry Where? are total lies. If Hamas can kill innocent people, they can certainly lie uh, uh, about these numbers. <laughs> uh, that, that's a new and, uh, one for me. I didn't know that the numbers uh, were inflated. I, I've, I've seen a lot of backing up to, to validate that. Yeah. Max, do you have any? Well, well, well Mort, Morton won't even tell his own donors certain numbers, and that's why this ZOA has lost its tax-exempt status. So we expect this kind of fabrication. We that is a him. lie. Um, we we are absolutely are a non-profit non organization. Stop lying. We are a non-profit organization, a 501c3. There's a huge we scandal in the organization not, right we have now. Fully, we're fully validated as a non-profit organization. Stop are, lying even okay. about that. You're lying and lying and lying and calling your donors names. are in That's open all revolt. You can do. Okay, okay, That's Max, let's get, let's get your solution uh, if the ceasefire <laughs> continues to fail, Max. All right, well... Well, the ceasefire continues to fail because of the desire for Netanyahu, in the, who's being pushed from the right, to kill more, to satiate the kind of bloodlust we're seeing. And yet we've seen Netanyahu confess today in an official statement that 100 percent of tunnels can't be eliminated, that there is no actual military solution. We have to go back to the 2012 ceasefire, which Hamas initially honored. Those are the facts. And Israel violated repeatedly over and over again, which led us to where we are today. Uh, today? And, and look at the ceasefire that John Kerry attempted to broker and it was a it was a ceasefire that would lead to the lifting of the siege I think that's the first step to easing the violence I don't see why Morton or any or any humane person would want to keep two million people under siege but now we're dealing with the situation where bodies are being Another collected lie. under the rubble which covers uh, almost 40 percent of the Gaza Strip three, where three, electricity's been cut off where water is being cut off a humanitarian ago, crisis where scabies is spreading and shelters three, are being lies, attacked lies, where people lies, are taking lies, shelter nonsense. they're being attacked that has to stop immediately. <laughs> Morton, do you agree with ending the siege? We have one minute left. <laughs> and Morton, Israel, has, Israel has supported five ceasefires. Hamas kept firing missiles after the ceasefire. It's not a laughing matter. They it's didn't, not funny. They didn't, they didn't fire. I have Tourette syndrome, so I make sounds I can't control. I hope you'll, you'll uh, allow uh, uh, this uh, ailment that I have since uh, five years old. It has nothing to do with laughter. <laughs> if Hamas did not violate the ceasefire, there would have been already a ceasefire. <laughs> I couldn't see you on the screen. And, all right. Thank you guys uh, so much for both of your insight. Morton Klein, president of the Zionist Organization of America. Max Blumenthal, author, journalist. Thanks so much, both of you. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Abby Martin. And if you missed any of today's heated debate, be sure to check it out on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash breaking the set. Have a great night.